the on the AS on the AS three, the most important uh, command I think it is this command. It is uh, the JCP option. You should know that by using this option, the so uh, the switches the all the access uh, all the all the switch will obtain the IP address and the port of the controller. So that is that is the most important uh, uh, command about this part. And then what is next? The next is we shall know that this uh, uh, this this uh, uh, device S3 will function as the DHCP survey for the terminal users. So it, it means we need to configure uh, DHCP ports for terminal users. We will create five uh, ports, and every port is used for different users. We will create the DHCP ports for the serious users, and we will find that for the World users and the wireless user of, of the CS department will create different DSP uh, ports, and also for the market department uh, and for the world user and the wireless users, we create a different DSP ports. And at the last, uh, we know that uh, for the RD department, uh, uh, we don't have the we don't have the wireless users. We only have the world users, so we just create one DSP ports. And what is next? The next is the interconnection configurations. We know that for the fabric, I mean this this, uh, this part, it is the fabric, and uh, the DSP service and other service is just a uh, just a, a network results. So how to get the results? Uh, result result uh, result results. We have already seen that we will create a uh, network result. Uh, we will create a network result on the fabric, and uh, we will use the board device to connect to the network results so uh just we need so we need to create the corresponding interface that connected to the border on the ar3 so what is it is this interface it is a logical interface it is a WLAN if and is it, is it we have already seen the in the last lessons it is a WLAN if 115 and 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 we need to we need to configure the physical interface we uh, mentioned it before it is we have already configured this mode to hybrid mode and then we need to add a new target VLAN and what is next and uh, the next is we said that we will create another interface to simulate the email service so this interface we need to create on the AR3 it is the loopback one and we configure its IP address to this and so what is next? The next is we said on the fabric, we will create two uh, which network. The first one is the OA and another one is RD. And for the different which network, we have the different external network and we create it on the AR3 and we need to create the connected interface on the AR3 and, uh, and uh, you find that it is still the which if it is the VLAN if so we need to create the corresponding VLAN and the corresponding VLAN if on the AS3 and for the physical interface we need to add the new uh tag VLAN so so and what is next next is we need to enable the LDP function so that is the MS MCE device controller will discover a link between the fabric and the external networks and uh, Another function it is about uh, the how the AR3 uh, get the connectivity to the MSMCE. So we will find that uh, the AR3 connected to the to a switches and uh, the controller is also connected to the switches. So for the AR3, we need to configure the in, the connected interface is IP address, and you find that we configure the interface uh, IP address, and then. And then for all the device, we will see that uh, all the switches that uh, inside the fabric, they will open an IP address. And uh, this IP address, just because for the, the for the AR service switches, it don't have the router for the fabric uh, for the switch in the fabric. So we need to use the SourceNet technologies on AR three just to light just to light the just like the device, the switches can con communication with the controller. So you will find that we create an ACL just to permit the 
specific address and we configure the source the source net on the AR3. And what is next? The next is we show you that for the just for just for the terminal users, all right, for the terminal users, the external gateway, the, the external network is on the AR3 and now by configure the external network on the fabric, we can we can just let the terminal to communication with the AR3, but the AR3 don't have the route that designated to the terminal. So we can send the packet to the AR3, but the AR3 don't have the uh, capabilities to, to return the packet to the terminals. So we need to configure the return routers to the host network, just uh, configure it on the AR3. Okay, what is the next? The next, the next is, the, when you configure default routers from AF3 to external network so that the AR3 can just uh, uh, forward the traffic to the AR service switches and then the AR service switches will have the will have the router to the controller and uh, we'll set the controller's gateway on the AR3 switches so so that you shall know why the controller can communicate with the AR3 and why the access switches inside the public communication with the controller. Just we use the source net and for the controller, its gateway is on the AR service switch. That is why they can communicate with each other. And uh, now let's look at what is the step about the, about the, uh, about this. The first thing is we need to ensure that on the AR3, all the device, all the device, all the device, all the device have already opened IP address from the interfaces IP port. So let's check it if they have already opened this. Now let's check it. We can check it on the AR3. We can just check the IP port. For this IP port, WLAN if for the WLAN if for the WLAN if time, you can find that we have already some IP address have already been used and we can check it. But the AIP entry, we can check the AIP entry. You can find that for the IP entries, the inside it, you for the IP entries, you inside it one and uh, inside the IP entries, we can find that uh, this device, maybe we can try to pin them. Oh, no, no, I think I need to use a web instance just because I configure the interface with inside a web instance. Wait a moment, maybe the device don't goes online. Okay, it doesn't matter. Maybe this device, it doesn't open up the address. And uh, if they have already opened up the address from the AR3, we can just uh, let them go online on the controllers. And uh, how to configure it? The first thing is we need to, the first thing is we need to log into the controllers and uh, start a deployment. When we, when we try to, wait a moment, I will log out and show you what is the, web, the Port page for you. First, when we try to log in, in the controllers, you will find that we will have the deployment scenarios. We have some scenarios for you, you and you can find that we have the fabric network. That is what the scenarios we will use today. And the first thing is we need to create a site. And on this place, you can find that from the device results, we need. Uh, and we have the set design, these buttons, and we click it and we can use the create this button to create a new site. And you can find that for the site, we need to specify uh, specify the device type. For example, so if inside this site, we have the firewall, we have the AR routers, we have the OLT, but uh, OLT and own use button, we don't need to use it just because it is for the transmission scenarios. 
And you can find that for the WAC and APs, we can't contain the AP and the WACs in the same time, so just because if the, this AP, it means the cloud AP, and the WAC, it means we have uh, just a, just a, a traditional AC, it's not a, we use the W. Uh, WAS usually that in our scenarios we use the switches to function as the a function as the the AC. All right. So just like me, uh, we can find that we have already we have already used the, the we have already built the uh, uh site and its name is HQs and uh, you can find that for this site is the device type is the AR switches and the WAC is. And uh, you can find that in, inside this site, we have already all the devices, and uh, this device have already goes online. And uh, the next step is uh, what we need to do is we need to, to we need to wait a moment. Sorry, missing because maybe blink my eyes. Is that is necessary to to show and describe any meanings of the means. Uh, any to be. Yes. Uh, no, no, no. So you don't need to do any configurations on the device just because you find that uh, I see that. Uh, okay. So I have already power on all the device and uh, all the switches. Now I mean, if the switches is spotted, the uh, spotted to be uh, managed by the controller, after the power on, they will try to. Uh, opting IP address by the physical interface. So it will they will send the DSP discovery to, and uh, actually uh, they don't know which device will reply. But uh, you can find that in our topologies, uh, the AS3 will reply the DSP packet and uh, all the device for the border and edge access. After they power on, they will try to send it DSP discovery packet. And you can find that, for example, for the access, access one, the DSP packet can be received by the AS3 just by the physical links between the uh, edge and the border, and uh, the DSP packet will be received by AS3, and AS3 will assign IP address for it. And uh, and uh, for all the switches, they will obtain the IP address, and its gateway is AS3. And uh, I have already said it before on the AS3, on the AS3. On the AS3, you will find that we configure the, this interface. This interface is a gateway for all the switches. And uh, we configure the DSP function on the interface. And uh, you find that we configure the DSP option. And uh, this option, you will find that we configure the edge controller mode. It is edge cloud. And uh, the, I, the mode is IP. It, is, it means we tell the device uh, what is the IP address of the controllers. And we configure the IP address of the of the controller and the port of the controllers, and all the devices they will receive these options, and they will try to pause the they will try to pause uh pause the options, and they will know what is the IP address of the controller, and then they will try to send the a packet to the controllers. You you can just think this packet is used for the, the situations. And you you should know that for all the switches, the gateway is the AS3, and the AS3 have the abilities to send the packet to the switches, and the switcher will send it to the controller. So you will find that we will we don't need to configure anything on the switches, and you will find that if you see the product document, you will find that before before you configure the device, I mean before you add the device on the on the controllers, you can't do anything after the device is power up, power power on. You can uh, maybe I can I can log in a device for you. You can find that. You can find that all integer password is crowded. Now this device have already been managed by the controllers, but now this device is the first login, and I didn't see set it as password just because just because for the function. I mean the function we call it is a Plug and play. You can't uh, you can't do any input by the console. If you, you if you input anything, it will interpret interrupt the 
plug and play functions. So you will find that we don't need to do anything on the device just after we power on it. But you need to configure the on the network. And uh, yes, yes, it is similar. Plug and play features. It is, you shall know that it is used in the DCM. But now in the campus network, they also support so these features, plug and play. It is something film, filmless. And you can find that if we see the product uh, document for the S series, and you can find that it also supports these functions. For examples, and uh, what a moment, it should be in the department configurations, there was touch. But just uh, they have the, maybe the different uh, name. You can just find that uh, deploy zero touch. You can find that we call it the uh, zero touch, zero touch, uh, zero touch, zero touch. Just uh, we need to configure the option. And uh, when you configure the PMP functions, but uh, now we use the default WLAN one. So they can, they can register to the controllers just by opening IP address and uh, opting an uh, DCP option. Okay, and I think uh, so. And uh, maybe you are familiar to the plug and play features on the DCU networks, and uh, actually, so they are the same on the campus network. Okay. All right. And uh, all the device actually, so before, actually, so before we click the other device. Other devices buttons. Actually, you, you need to make sure the device have already registered to the controllers, and then you click the other uh, device, and then you can you can find that we can add the device to it, and we can add the device by two modes. The first mode is the device mode, and another mode is yes mode. But actually, which uh, no matter which mode you choose, at last you need to. You need to input the yes ESN numbers of the device. So you can just think the ESN numbers is the unique identifiers for the controller to distinguish the different devices. So uh, no matter which mode you choose, at least for example, now I need to uh, input ESN numbers and the name, and I select the 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 rule uh, for the fabric and. Uh, and and uh, then you can find that, for example, so for this device, for this device, the ESN numbers is the master, uh, is a, is the master input, uh, is the is the master crowd input, and uh, you can configure this name and uh, is you can configure the rule. So now you can find the the first step is the other the device for this side, and we need to add the access switches, age, and the borders. And uh, for the APs, actually, so now, if you add the device, the APs will not register, re register to the controller just because now the AP doesn't uh, obtain the IP address from, uh, from the AR routers. So now just uh, like what we will do after it. And uh, if we, if the device uh, have already registered to the controller successfully, and then after you add the device, you can find that, you can find the device. Uh, the status will be normal or will be alarm, but uh, it will not be the not re re register, all right? And now let's look at what is the next step. The next step is you can follow the deployment uh, scenarios. And in the port page, if you click uh, the fabric network, and you will get uh, just like a page, just like a uh, guide. And you can find that in this page, we have the a network planning, fabric network, a logical network, and a server deployment. You can just uh, finish all the deployment in this page. And the, first, uh, the first step is the results pool configurations. You can find that we need to configure the fabric global resource. It, it includes the VLAN, bridge domains, and VXLAN network identifiers. And uh, you should know that. You should know, you, I think you know what is BD, what is VNS, but uh, you should notice that the VLAN is used for the terminal. You should know that that is VLAN is used for the terminals. And then when to configure the underlay automation 
resource pools, and you find that in, in this page, we still need to configure the VLAN, but this VLAN is the interconnection VLAN. This VLAN is used to between, used between the border between edge and between the access switches. It's used for them to, to build the IGP, uh, IGP uh, protocols. And you can find that we need to configure, we need to configure the interworking IP address and the loopback interface IP address. And uh, this VLAN and this IP address is used to establish the underlay connectivities. And uh, for the IP address, of the loopback, you should know that it is used for the OSP router IDs and the BGP UAPs. And uh, and actually, I have already finished the deployment, so you can you can you can see the command on the device. I can I will show you. For example, on this device is a device. You can find that we have already configured the BGP UA, BGP. Uh, wait a moment, what is it? It is numbers. Okay. You can find that it has already the root IDs, and you can find that the root ID IP address is the is inside is inside is in the range of the loopback interface IP address you, that you configured on the controller, right? And you can find that we have the OSPF. You can find that its root ID is also the IP address. And you can find that in this device, it should have an interface that is loopback zero. You can find that we have an interface or it is a loopback one and its IP address is inside the range, the range of the, you can, that you configured on the controller. And this, what is next? After you configure the underlay automation pools, and actually uh, the controller will deliver and uh, delivery the, uh, the, uh, the VLAN and uh, the IP address for the device, and they can communicate with each other, and they can establish the OSPF peer. And what's next? The next is the we need to configure the template. The template is used for the authentications. So what we need to configure? The first is we need to configure radius service, and actually it is a built-in radius service. You can find that. We need to configure the radius service, and uh, it is a built-in service. Just because you know that the before the MS MCE campus, you should know that it is the edge controller campus, and you should know that edge controller campus is the authentication service. It is part uh, to function as a radius service. So for the MCE campus, it is still supported to function as a radius service. So you can you just use this button to let uh, the controller. Itself to function as the radius survey. But if you want to use another another radius service, you can also just uh, cl uh, close these functions and create another authentication service. But uh, now we just use it. And uh, you, we need to set the key for the radius service. You just, just notice that this radius service is a template, and this template it means we will transform the template to the configuration to the device. So you can just find that on the H1 device, we can find uh, a radius survey. We can find a radius survey. You can find we have a radius survey and its name is a radius. The name is we configured on the controllers and uh, the radius survey IP address and uh, the accounting interview and uh, the key is what we configured on the controller and uh, the controller will push the configuration to the device. And what is next? The next is we need to configure the portal service. You know that we will use the portal, we will use the portal authentications. And you should know that the MCE campus, it is also supported to function the function as the portal service. So you find that it is still, we need to just enable these functions. It is the built-in service and the Page push protocols is HTTPS, and also we need to configure the key. And the and what we configured on the controller will be pushed to the device. You can find that we have the portal profiles. And what is next? The next is we need to configure the authentication template. What is the authentication template? Actually, it is just a, 
the if you know if you are you are familiar about uh, the campus the campus switches you should know that, know that for the switches we call the we have two uh two mode to configure the authentication as one mode we we call it the unified mode and unless is traditional if we use the unified the unified mode we just need to configure the profile you can just find that we have so many authentication profiles you can find that authentication profiles all right and uh, you can find that we have authentication profile name is the mac and dot uh, one x and uh, inside it we just associate the dot one x access profiles and the mac access profiles so this configuration is pushed by the controllers and uh, you just find that we configure the authentication template on the controllers one is portal and another is the mac and uh, dot one x for example so for the mac and one dot one x you just need to uh just need to uh just need to choice the authentication mode and uh, you need to uh you need to configure the bypass policies and then you finish the authentication template and the template will be will be pushed to the device and what is next and actually is now the first part have already be finished it means the first part we have already finished it and then we can go to the next page uh, on the guide on the guide buttons and then it is the fabric network and we need to configure it the first thing we need to create a fabric you can find that we need to create the fabric is name and you need to uh, de uh, designate the networking type. It means we use the distributed gateway and all the centralized gateways. You should know that it is. Uh, it, it 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 means we use the VXLAN for the fabric network. And uh, for our scenarios, we use the distributed gateways. And uh, we need to specify what which switch to function as the uh, AC. And uh, in our scenarios, we use the border to function as the AC. And if we need to enable the automatic routing to make configurations. We need to enable it. And uh, for the S numbers, it means we will use the BGP UAP that we uh, we have already targeted target in our you know lessons in, in last days. And uh, and what is advanced? And uh, for example, you can need to apply it. But uh, Wait a moment, and I have already configured it, so I will just show you what we need to configure. Just uh, if we want to configure fabric, and uh, you can apply it. And uh, if you apply it, you can now you need to use this click these buttons, and then we can add a device, add a device for this fabric network. But I have already finished it, so we just need to check on the fabric. I have already finished it. We can use the modify config. You can find that what you want to configure. And if we if we uh, click the automatic routing domain configurations, and it, it means the it, it means the controller will configure the IGP protocols for the fabric network by itself. So you just need to specify that we use the single domain or the multiple or multiple domains. It means for the OSPF you use the single domain or the multiple domains. And uh, for the interface type, uh, you, can, you should know that for the OSPF, we have the broadcast uh, P2P and uh, P2MP. And if we use uh, the OSPF equation, equation functions, you can just uh, click it and then if you apply it, now you can find that we use the single single areas and we the interface type is broadcast and we didn't configure the OSPF configurations, authentications. And we apply the configuration will be push it to the device and uh, what is what is next is uh, when we try to add a device i mean if we try to add a device we need to specify that the device is rule for example so you can use that you can find that now this board this is board all right oh uh, uh you can find that this is border device and uh, its rule is border it means the it, now it means the border of the wavelength to make sure you and now you can find that for the edge device it is the edge its rule is edge it means it is edge of the wavelength it means it means it means for the access switches it is a tented rule you can know that 
just because we learn another lesson and uh, we call it the authentication for the moment and to check his name. And uh, in our words, this lesson, we call it uh, the network animation control. So we said it before, we have a function, we call it uh, the policy association, all right? And it means the edge device will function as the access point, uh, authentication point, and uh, access switch is the extended. And uh, access switches and edge switches, they will do the this function. They will, they will work, they will use the, this feature, the policy association. And after you specified the rule of all the device, you will finish the configurations about the fabric. And if you if you finish the configurations, you can click this button, configuration status, to check if all the configurations have already successful. And uh, and not and then if we can finish it, and you find that. Uh, we will have the fabric networks, and this is a logical, a logical, logical topology. So this is borders, and by this this device, you can go to the external networks, and and by using this device, you can go to the network resource, for example, the TCP service. And so, what is next? And you can find that this is age. It means age is the. It means age is the. Uh, is the uh, you can think it is the age of the Western two means, and this is access switches. And uh, for the age and the access switches, they will use the policy association functions to work together. So, what is the next? The next is we need to create the external network. You can find that we have three buttons, three buttons on the left of the page. The first is the external external network. We can use this this button to create the external network for the for the terminal users you should know that for this fabric for this fabric we'll create two logical network the first one is OA and the other one is RDS so we'll create two external network two different logical domain network the first one is OA you can find that it's OA and we use the WLAN if what it means it means we'll create a corresponding WLAN if interface on the body device and what is the egress? What is the egress routing mode? It is static. It means we will configure the static routers. And if you enable these buttons, interconnection, internet connection, it means we will create a default routers for the external network. And what is next? The next is you need to specify which one is the border device. You need to define it is border and which port is the interconnection port. It means you need to specified the physical port on the body device and which VLAN is used to connect it to the external network and what is the local IP address and what is the remote IP address and what is next the next is the root configurations you should know that we have already we have already enabled this button interconnection internet connections so now the controller will generate a default router for it so the configurations will be the same for the RDS. So now let's look at what is the real config that controller push to the other device. We can find that. For example, so for the board device, you can find that we will have an interface. It is VLAN, this VLAN. We will have this interface. You can find that we have an interface. This interface have all be all be associated with a web instance and its IP address is this. And what is next? The next is for the physical interface. For the physical interface, it will allow pass the VLAN. You should know that for this VLAN is used for OA, and this VLAN is used for the RD for the internet work. So, and what is, what is this used for? This is is used for the network resource, and you can just check its IP routing tables. For example, for OA, you can find that. We config a static routers and it is the default routers. And what is the next hop? The next hop is the is the is the, the remote IP address that configured on this place. That is the next hop. And uh, then 
we need to configure is uh, network survey results. What is the network survey results? Actually, it's, it is meaning to use configure the DHCP service. And uh, you need to configure the DHCP service IP address. And, uh, the, and uh, now, in our scenario, so we config another, another service. And this service is used to simulate, simulate it as an email service. And you need to configure and other service is IP address. And what is next? The next is you need to specify which device connected to the network to the network results and which port on this port, this device is used to connect to the network device and what which VLAN is used and what is interface configured on the board and what is IP address configured on the uh, corresponding device. So you can just find what configured we will the computer will push it to this device. You find that it will it will push uh when I if and this when I if will be bind to an uh, OPN instance and you will find that this OP instance have a name. And you will find that it should be moment advice. Oh no it's not in this place. And you will find that uh, we and uh, you will find that this interface have already Find a uh, open instance, you, and you can check its IP written table. You can find that we have a static routers. This routers is used to designate to the other service. All right, it is the other service. It is other service, and you have we have all another static routers. It is this routers is used to uh, go to the DHCP service, but. Uh, what is the address that we use is we you, you find that the IP address of the DHCP service is the same with the IP address is in the same subnet of the IP address of the WLAN if so we don't have the same routers just because we can obtain it by the direct router. Okay, now what is next? We have already configured the external network and we have already configured the network survey results what is next the next is we need to configure the logical network it means when you configure the win all right and uh, we configure two wins on the oh wait a moment we still need to configure another configure what is it we need to configure the access management what it means it means uh, we need to configure the edge device. The, and you should know that the edge device is function as uh, so the access auth authentication point, and they will they will they will do the authentication functions for the edge terminal device. And uh, first, we need to choose uh, a device, and you, you will find that we have edge one and edge two. They are the edge of the Western domain. We need to choose one, and then we need to configure the VLAN of the cable web. What is the VLAN user for? This VLAN is used for the policy association. That is the function. Wait a moment. This VLAN is used for the policy association. Okay, all right. That is used for the uh, policy association. And you can find that for these features, they will use the capable channels between the authentication execution point and the control point. And the age is control point and the access is the execution point. And you need to uh, uh, specify the VLAN and the IP address that will be configured on the age device. And what is next? The next is for the authentication control point, you need to set the interface that are connected to the access switches. You need to, you need to specify the the type of this point you will find that it is connected to the extended access switches and you need to configure the authentication template for it and for the authentication execution uh, execution point you need to configure it you need to configure which port is connected to the terminals and for this port you need to configure its type you will find that we need to configure it is the terminal all right, and uh, we need to enable this button. It is the inherit authentication template on on the authentication control point. It means we configure the authentication template for the edge port for the edge port, and uh, 
the access which we will inherit it from the edge device. So for the wireless access point configuration, so we don't need to configure it on this place, we will configure it on other place. And now let's look at what is the next. The next is, is the logical network. But before it, we can say what configure will be pushed on the access switches and the edge switches. And you'll find that for the edge switch, We will, we will have a couple we will have interface that you use for couple app uh for wait a moment you will find that we have uh what oh that is in space we will have interface that is used for you can that we have interface and this interface have already enabled the dcp functions and it is used to assign the IPT drives allocate the IPT drives uh for the access switches and uh, For the access switches, you can find that, wait a moment, uh, for the, you can find that uh, on this edge switches, uh, we will specify that the couple have a source interface on this device. And uh, for the access switches, for example, for the access one, you can check its configurations. So you can find that uh, it will, it will have a command to, Wait a moment, we have a command to, shall it be this command? Wait a moment, it will have a command to, to specify which command which to use. We learn one. You can find that it will use this command, access, AS access. AS access interface, it means it is it configures the policy associations. On the access, it will specify the source interface that is used to establish cable web tunnels, and then it will, uh, it will uh, allocate IP address from this interface, and then it will, and then it can cooperate uh, with the edge device. And what is next? And you can find that for the access switches, it will get the authentication template from the edge device. You can find that it also have the the authentication the the authentication profile from the edge device and what is next the next is the logical network and i have already finished it and we just can use the oa tool as an example first is we need to create the OA network the or the win the win when to specify its name and i use it OA. and you can Define the WRF name. You can find that now we have the WRF, just like we, what we say. In the website, if we if, if we want to, uh, to really communicate with each other, so we need to find it to the same WRF. And now in the controllers, you can specify the WRF's name. And for the OE, OE which network, we configure its WRF name to OA. And now, and then you, you need to uh, associate the network survey results and the external network to the web instance and what is next. So what it means, it means, it means you can find that for the age, you can find that for the age, if you associate the network results and the external network, it means on the border we have two web, we have different web instance, you can find that. We have, we have the web instance surveys and we have the external network, all right? And uh, it means for the two uh, web instance, the Im import RT values will be included in the uh, the this web instance. It will be included in its import values. So it means for the web instance OA, it can learn the, the route that uh, generated by the external network and the network survey results that it is used for. And then we need to uh, configure the gateway. So what is the gateway? You can find that. In the gateway, we need to configure the type. It is a dynamic VLAN. And we need to specify the VLAN, what it means. If you have the memory about uh, what is VAP, we need to we need to make the VLAN to the VXLAN WinR ID, all right? But now you can just, uh, you can't see the WinR just because the WinR values is uh, 
uh, is uh, is uh, is assigned finds the uh, controllers by itself, and we need to configure the subnet and its gateway. So what it means? It means we will create a VBD on the corresponding device. For example, you can find that. Oh, wait a moment. It should be maybe it is one. You can find that we will create the corresponding interface on the edge and borders, and it will be bound to the OP instance OA. And uh, it's, it's app address will be configured, and we will enable the DHCP select relay these functions. Okay, you will find that what is the meaning? The meaning is we will create the WBD on the device. And what is the next? The next is you need to specify which which interface can access to this workslab uh, domains. So you can find that uh, we have already configured it is OA. You can find that uh, we need to configure on the access switch one and we access switch two, which interface can access to the which network or logical network. It means you can find that we have specified the interface. It should be the on the access one, it should be the this interface. You can find that uh, we specified is the service VLAN is the dynamic VLAN, and it means the the terminal will will be authenticated, and after the uh, passes the authentication, and they will obtain the VLAN that authorized by the controller, and then we we see that we have already do the mapping between the VLAN to the VLAN uh, BD, alright, and then the terminal can access the VLAN. To me. And then we need to configure the wireless access and it is just to specify which device is used for the wireless access. And then you finish the logical network. You can find that for the, what is logical network? Logical network, it means a VP instance that configured on the VXLAN to me. And we configured two uh, logical network one is OA and one is RD. And then we have already said that for the OA and RD, we need to let them communication with each other, but not for the all the subnet. We just let part uh, just a, a subnet in the OA and can communication with RD. So how to configure it? We we just need to click these buttons. It is the OA internet into working. You can find that we can specify which subnet inside the OA can communication with the RD. You can just find that. We need to, do, we, we need to choose which device to do the interconnection device and uh, we need to specify what is the mode of the interworking network mode. It is the partition network. And then you specify the uh, subnet inside OA and the subnet inside RDs and then you click apply. So what is the controller will do, you can find that. Now you should remember, we specify this function on the border. So what is the function? For example, you can just find that. You can find that what is the function, it, what a function it does. You can just find that. It is just a push to static routers for on the borders. You can find that for these routers, it is used for the user inside OAs, it will have the root that's designated for the OA, for the RD, and the next hop is RDs. And uh, for the users inside RDs, it will have the root that's designated for a subnet inside OAs, and the next hop is the OAs. And I think maybe you have already used these functions by manually, all right? Just to use this, this command to let uh, terminals or the subnet uh, belongs to different uh, web instances, they can communicate with each other. Okay, so what is the next? The next is the survey deployment. What is the survey deployment? It means we need to create users, all right? We need to create users and the users for, and the users, they belong to different user groups. So we need to configure, just in the survey deployment in this page, we need to configure the user and we need to create three Groups. The first one is the RD, another one is the series, another one, and the last one is market. For different uh, development, uh, we create a different users that belong to them. Okay, you can remember its name is Chris, sales, and the market. 
And what is the next? Next, the next is we need to create the security uh, security group, right? And you can find that for the for the different U terminals, we create a different security group for the for the wellness users and uh, wild users in market and uh, sales. We create a different uh, security groups. So now we get uh, four. We get four security groups, and then for the RT, we also create the uh, security groups. So let's look at what we need to do if we create the security groups. You just create a name, you can find that, we just create a name. And uh, now we don't have a member in it, just because the security group is a result of the authorized, 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 all right? And uh, at last, we need to create a resource group. Remember, we see, we see that we create an interface on the AR service, and this interface is used to simulate the email service. Now we create the email service, and uh, but but for this, we need to create the members just because it is a static resource. Okay, and it is uh, it is not belong to the fabric. It is outside. It is belong. It is located in the outside of the. Uh, VXLAN domains, and you need to specify its IP address. So, what it is used for? Maybe now you don't know, but uh, uh, after we finish it, I will show you what uh, what uh, what will be what command will be pushed to the device, and then it is the policy control. What is the policy control? It means from this security group to the destination destination group if they can communicate with each other and you can find that they have the directions for example for the rd to the market wireless it can't communication but 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 for the market wellness to the rd the result is same but we can specify a different result all right so in this page we can create all right okay we can create we can create the source group we can create a source group and uh, the decision group, and then we can specify if they can communicate with each other. Is it, is it permit or deny? And we can also use this command to refine the control rules. What it and uh, and use this command policy reverse. What it means? It means for if we use this command, this button, it means from RD to the market wireless, we will also generate a. Uh, policy control rule. And uh, now I can show you for the policy control and uh, the security group, uh, what will be command will be put to the device. But before it, uh, we need to use this command. What is command? We need to, we need to, uh, we need to deploy it. You can find that we need to use this command and then we will push some command to the device. And then now I can tell you what command will be pushed to the device. You can find that actually it is it is not so difficult. You can find that on the device we have the use group, UCL group. Actually, it is the it is the security group that you can configure on the controllers, and you can find that it is UCL group. And what is UCL group used for? Wait a moment, I need to check it. Okay, now you can find that. Wait a moment. Wait a moment. You can find that we have so many ACL rules, all right? We have so many ACL rules. And uh, inside the ACL rules, the source is a UCL group and the destination is UCL groups and the action is deny or permit. But uh, actually the, all it is deny. So what is the policy control? The policy control actually is, is ACL, but the ACL source and the destination is the UCL group. And it can also be the destinations. The destination is the results group. It's a address that you can figure on the controller, all right? And uh, how it uh, use, how the device uses the ACL to just uh, to do the traffic filter. It, it will use the, it will use the traffic policy. Wait a moment, I need to find where is the traffic policy. Wait a moment. Okay, now you can find that 
it is the traffic filter is traffic filter and the its direction is inbound it means for the all traffic that it received it received it will it will use the ACL so just by use this command the device the device the I mean the physical device the switchers the switchers can just feel control if the RD this group can communication with the destination uh, groups but uh, and that's question is how the device know if the IP address you should know that when we try to do communication the packet we use just to carry the IP packet uh, IP headers how the device can know if uh, how the device can know why this IP address is belong to RT why this IP address is belong to market so that is what uh, the authentication do you will find that uh, the next thing that we need to do is the is on the on the page is the automation policies it means we need to configure the authentication rules but we only need to use the default and we need to you we need to default users and we need to we need to just uh, we just need to uh, select uh, select uh, authentic protocols uh, select a pep chip and EAP md5 and for other we just can keep it by default and then we need to configure the authorization result so what it means you can find that you can find that we are uh, for different uh, terminals in different department for example so for the wireless users in the market department we will create a result for it and inside a result you can find that we will we will create uh, which we learn we will use to authorize it to it and uh, we'll create which uh, security group we will authorize for it so now i think you should know that why the device will know why which which security group that the ip address belongs to just because the device the terminal it will be authenticated by the device and after it passes the authentication uh that the access switch or the edge switch it will know which ip address it belongs to the uh, the the terminal the security group it belongs to just because we have the authorization result okay we just need to configure it all the result by our design you can find that we need to configure its vlan and its security groups and by using the vlan the terminals can access the vlan domain and then the next is the authorization rules it means we need to configure for different uh, different user group uh, when to we need to do the different authentication uh, rules so you can find that inside it for example so we need to specify for example so for the seals where the rule we need to specify the user should be should be used the world uh world authentications it is not awareness authentications and uh, when to match the user group it means so for example so this rule is used for the uh, for the account that belongs to use group uh, sales and then it is and then what he we need to specify if the if if it it uh our account, account match the authorization rules and if it passed the authentication so which authorization result will be assigned for it and that is the uh, authorization rules but uh, just one thing we need to be mentioned for the wireless for the wireless users for the wireless users we need to configure the rule and you need to specify the SSID ids if you didn't specify the ids for example for the market users if we didn't specify it it means for example for the market users for the account that belongs to market it can connect it to the well as uh, SSID seals and it can pass the authentication just because you didn't specify the SSIDs and if you didn't specify SSIDs which one will be matched first just uh, will it uh, it will uh, depend on the priorities you can find that this rule have a higher priorities than these rules so if we didn't specify the SSID on the rules for example the market uh, for example the terminal that belongs to market 
it can connect it connect it to the SSID seals and then it can pass the authentication just because it will it will it will it will match this rule. And then what is what we need to configure on the on the controllers? It is the it is the WLAN service. For example, so we shall know that we we will uh, we have already add the we have already add the AP, and uh, we shall know that on the site design we have already add the AP. All right. We have already added the AP, but uh, if you if you check uh, the topology, you will find that uh, the the this interface that uh, AP connected to the access. If this can this if this interface will be needed to be authentication, and if it needed to be authenticated, how how the AP how the AP connected to uh, communication with the border? We know that uh, the border is the AC. How AP communication with the border? That is a problem. So we need to configure a, a function on the controllers. So which function it is? The wait a moment. I need to configure it. It should be the site configurations. And inside this this page, provision and the site configurations, we need to configure the management VLAN. And for the border device, we need to configure the the Man the the management VLAN or to negotiation for wireless device to to and uh, what it means it means uh, you can find that in, in this topology it is the border device if you enable this function on borders it will have a commander you can find that it shall be this commander for example it should be in this device this place. You will find that it will it will have this command PMP startup VLAN stand enable and PMP will start up VLAN. What it means? It means border will try to send a, a, a special LDB LDP LDP packet to its downstream, for example, so for the age and for the access. And the access and the age will also send as a special uh, special LDP uh, uh, packet to access. And it means, for example, for the access, if it receive a LDP packet from the AP, and it means that for the access two, all right, access two, it can uh, distinguish that uh, there are AP connected to it, all right, just by the by use the LDP uh, uh, by the LDP packet, all right, you can find that it is the AP. Oh, wait a moment. It, oh no, it is should be the access to. You find that the access to you find that there are AP connected to it. You can find that, for example, neighbor neighbor brief. Just because the LDP, this information will carry the device type, you can find that the system is the AP1 and uh, the port description is the AP series. And uh, it also will, just by, the, by use this, the access to it will be awareness of the, there is a AP that connected to me. And then I will, then I, and, uh, and then I will join this interface to a VLAN. Which VLAN? The VLAN will be the VLAN 2 and then for the uplink that it will receive the special LDP, LDP, uh, LDP information, it will also join the uplink to the VLAN 2. So just by this function, I mean by this function, you can find that, you can find that for the interface that connected to the AP and for the interface that connected to the uh, down, uh, upstream, they will be joined to the VLAN 2, and this VLAN 2 is way, way configured on the border. So now, by these functions, age, access, and border, they will let the traffic that belongs to the AP, they can pass through, and they belong to the VLAN 2. So what is the next? The next is the border will be the DHCP survey for the AP. You shall know that AP 
if AP want to go uh, go uh, online, it first it need to obtain IP address. Okay, all right, and the border will be function as the TCP service and uh, allocate the IP address for the AP. And uh, what you need to what we need to configure is uh, first we need to configure the cap have source IP address. Uh, and uh, wait a moment. First, we I I think we need to configure the we need to configure the subnet that is used for AP to assign IP address. Just uh, still in this page, in, we click the switch and click the subnet, and then we create a subnet. This subnet is used for AP, and you should know that the AP will go communication with the border uh, by using the VLAN two. So we need to specify the VLAN ID to VLAN two, and then we need to configure the IP mask. It means the IP address that uh, the VLAN if true on the border. And then we need to enable the DSP functions and then we need to specify the AP mode. And, uh, and then we need to configure if we enable the control address or auto negotiation. What it means? It means border have already know the controller's IP address. It can, it can auto Alton generate the configurations about the DHCP 100 and uh, uh, 40 uh, and uh, 48 by itself. You can find that, and then you should know that for this subnet is used to uh, specify the ACS address to VLAN. So we need to configure the WAC address. So now let's look at what configure will be pushed to the device. You can find that actually. It's, on the border device, we will generate uh, interface VLAN 2. And uh, inside, you can find that uh, it, it, it will it have already generated the option about the controller, and it also have the con con option about the AC CP address. After the AP obtain the address from the border, it will obtain the controller CP address, and it also it will obtain the IP address of the AC and the AP will try to communication with the controller and it will try to communication with the border. And uh, in, for the border, we still need to specify it, which VLAN is used for the cap web. So you can find that we configure this command. And uh, you shall notice this config we will be specified by ourselves or, on, or by the web page. You need to configure the cap web source interface. Okay. And now, the AP can be config can be managed by the by the border or the AC. And uh, before it, for example, so now we can check it on the border. We can check the AP status. You can find that display AP or you can find that the AP status is normal. And what is next? The next is the next is when to configure a static net static on the AS3 just because. You should know that uh, in this experiment, uh, the controller is used uh, as the portal survey and uh, the authentication device the communication with the portal service through the source address translation of the AS3 to ensure that the portal survey can communication with the authentication device, the portal used by the authentic device to listen to the portal survey needed to be bypassed. What it means? It means the portal survey will send a packet to the authentication device just uh, Actively, but uh, you should know that the packet will not be forwarded by the AS3 just because the AS3 do a uh, source night. So we need to let the AS3 can forward the packet. So what we do, we can configure uh, the net survey or we can configure the net static just uh, by your choice. Okay. Now we use the static static protocol, net static, but also you can use choice in the net service, but it is the same. You can find that we need to configure the net static protocol and uh, the protocol is the UDP and the port is the two certain it is used by the portal protocol and the IP address it is the IP address of the border. That is why we need to use the DHCP static bonding functions on the AS3. That is why. Okay, and then we need to configure the template authentication template on the controller. You can find that we configure two wellness authentication template, and uh, you can and uh, one template is used for the wellness of the sales department, and one another is used for the terminal user. 
of the uh, market development. And uh, the configuration is similar, but we just need to clean, check which config when we config, we configure it. First, uh, when we configure the SSID of the authentication template, and we need to choice the authentication mode, you can find that it is the open network just because we use the portal to uh, function as the authentication protocol. So we don't need to set the password for the SSID. And uh, the page posture, we have already said, it is a built-in uh, page posture, okay? And the portal survey, it is also the, the portal protocols that we can choose the portal uh, to dot zero or the HAAC. The HAAC is a private protocol that is designed by Huawei. If you choose the HAAC and uh, this part, this configurations, I mean the configurations that uh, static, you don't need to configure it just because the procedure will be not uh, the same, uh, just call, compared to the standard portal protocol. And then you need to choose what is the primary portal service. And you should know that we can configure the portal survey just uh, before, all right? And then we need to configure which is the radius survey and the portion mode is what and which page will be pushed. And then if you want to do the security or the policies, you can do, you can specify this just because we can configure the portal or the free. It means if you, if you, or, uh, if you pass all the portal authentications and you got all that goes offline, so inside in two hours you don't need to you don't need to uh, do the authentications again in two hours, and then you need to select a device. It means which device will be this configuration will be pushed to, and you should know that the border is the AC and the border is the authentication point for the wireless users. So you choose the border, and then. The authentication template will be pushed to borders, and I think you can find it. You can find that. Uh, wait a moment. Okay, you can find that uh, for the for the border, it have two authentication template. All right, and uh, you can you can check its name. You can find that it is the authentication. It is the template that we create on the controller, all right, just uh, check its name, you can find that. And what is the next? The next is, is we need to configure the WLAN service on the on the borders web page. And uh, I think I need to open a uh, which machine and I will configure it on the which machine. Wait a moment, I'm, I'm trying to log in the controller on the virtual machine and uh, I will configure the border as well as survey on the virtual machine. Okay, now I have already logged in the controllers on the virtual machine just because the virtual machine can communication with the border, but uh, my computer, my terminals cannot uh, communication with the border directly just because the border is in the you know that border is in the uh, is not uh, uh, connected to my network, and uh, you can find that on this device on the static configuration. It's all the the or it will be on device management. On the device management, we click the border. We select the borders, and uh, we click the device configuration. Wait a moment, and then. Uh, Web page will be push. You can find that. Wait a moment. And then we can log in to the border. Hmm. Now we have already logged in the border and uh, maybe I need to check it.
Okay, now let's ch ch transmit the language to English. Okay, the first, now let's configure the world service on the borders web page. The first thing is we need to configure with a moment is the we need to create the SSID uh, template. We just uh, you can follow it. We can configure it on the profile. Inside the profile, we click uh, the wireless service and uh, you can find we can create the SSID profiles. We create a uh, SSD profiles and its name is the sales. Okay. And then we configure the name of the SSID. And uh, then we just uh, click the apply. And then we create another SSD profile. So it should be the market. All right, it should be market. Market, we just uh, configure its SSID to market. And uh, then we configure the WP profiles. We create, configure the WP profiles, all right. Market, we, we need to make sure the SSID is the same in the controller and the borders web page. What is next? Next is we need to configure the WP profiles. And uh, we need, first uh, we need, can create uh, the WP profile that is to use the for sales. And inside uh, the WP profile, so we need to uh, specify its uh, survey with ID, and uh, just uh, like uh, we planned. And we need to change the forty mode to tunnel. And then we just uh, can click uh, the apply. And uh, for the market, we also need to create uh, a profile market. And its SSID should be 210 and change the volume mode to tunnel. And then apply. And then we can bind the SSID profile to the web profile just uh, inside the, just uh, in the web profile, we can, web profile, we need to insert it. You can find that we need to specify as I said profile and we specify it to sales and apply. And for the market, the things is the same. Click the access profile and specify it to the market. What is next? The next is we need to specify the security profile, but you should know that actually it is the open network. So for the security profile, it will be, we just need to configure the default security profiles and change it to security policy to open and then apply. And then we just need to bind the authentication profile to the WP, pro to the WP profiles. And uh, for the WP profiles, we need to, we need to bind the authentication profiles and you should remember the name, for example, you can find that the, the, its name is generated by the controllers. For example, you can find that, you can check it on this place. For the wireless authentication file, for the seals, the, the authentication ID, you should remember it, it is and with the uh, five and five. So for the seals, we need to click this, all right, it is the seals, all right, so it's authentication profile should be this. And what is next, for the market, the authentication profile, we need to select it and you can check its name on the controller you can find that for the market the authentication profile its id is anyways the e8 all right and we just uh, click this authentication profile and we can apply and uh, then we have already finished it and uh, the next step is we need to associate the ap group with the WP profile and uh, we click the AP group uh, and uh, inside the default and click the WP configuration and uh, we just need to click the add buttons and we select the profile. First, we select the, the seals and for the wheel ID, we just can click, 
set it to one, and uh, we click we OK. And then we add uh, the button to just create the web uh, bind the web profile to market to the uh, to all, to the AP and uh, with ID we configure it to the two. Okay, now we have already bind uh, the web profiles to the web profiles to the AP groups. So now what is next? The next thing is we need to do the result uh, where, uh, where, where, where we, we need to uh, use our verifications we do it for example the, for the pc3 we need to check if we can find the ssid now you can find that we can find the ssid the ssid market the ssid sales and for the pc1 and the pc2 you need to remember our topology pc1 and the pc2 for the pc1 and the pc2 they are the Wild users, and if you try to log in different uh, uh, account, they will belong to different department. So the first thing is uh, let us let, let us log in the log in the the account that belong to the other department. I don't you should remember it for the other department for the other department the other department the the account its name is Chris. All right, and actually, I have already finished the authentications on it, and now I can we can just check it. We know that for the for the for the PC one is authentication control point is H one. We can just check it on the H one. You can find that we can just display access user. You can find that. We can find the authentication users is Chris, and we can, and I think we can by the user ID I of the username. Wait a moment, user ID, the username, Chris to check the verbose information. All right. Wait a moment. Detail. You can find that. We can find that for these users, we have already get the authorized VLAN. For example, you can you can use that the VLAN and. Uh, the squared group, the dynamic group, group names. It means for this this AP address, for this uh for this AP address, its VLAN is this, and its and its squared group is RDs. So for the each device, it knows which squared group this IP belongs to. All right, and now we can try to log in the logging another uh another account for example so we know that for the market or the sales we know that the sales can not communication with the rd all right we we have found that the the market world this subnet can communication with rd so we can just try to log in the account of sales on the pc2 all right on the PC2, and I need to check it if I already log in on the PC2. It should be the it should be the sales, all right. And uh, I have already logged in the sales account on the PC2. You can check it on the H2. Just because for the PC2 is access control point is the H2. And we can just uh, to display access to user. You can find that sales this account have already logged in. And uh, no, where's its IP address? It's IPv6. Wait a moment, I need to check it. Check its IP address. Oh, I need to enable its DHCP functions by manually. Wait a moment. Okay, now it have already get the IPv4 IP address. And you can find that now the H2 it knows this IP address is uh, its authentication result, all right? The username sales and uh, detail. You can find that for the H2 it knows which security group it is belongs to it is belongs to the sales world and then by the ACL 
all right, and by the traffic filter. Traffic uh, by the traffic filter. By the traffic filters, uh, the edge can control if PC1 can connect with the PC2. So what is the result? You know that PC1 and PC2. Now, PC1 belongs to the security group uh, RD, but for PC2, it belongs to the security group uh, sales. All right, just uh, can check it by using IP config. IP config, it is this, and for this IP config, it is, should be the, wait a moment, I need to check it. You can find that. Now, remember it's IP address, all right? Remember it's IP address, I can try to copy it. And for PC1, it cannot communication with the PC2. All right, and then we can try try to try through it. it. Wait a moment, I think for this API address, the, the edge will not reply the SMP unreachable just because it will be dropped. Okay, it's that matters, but now we can try to on PC2, we log in this account, you find that. On the PC2, we try to log in the market, this account, we can check the result if it will be different. Now I have already logged in the market account on the PC2 and you can check the the result on the AJ2. You can find that on the on the AJ2, the access users have already changed from the sales to market. And now we can just check the IP address about the PC2. Now the IP address changed from uh, the this to another IP address. And we can change, check if they can communication with each other, all right? Mm -hmm. Wait a moment, it should be ping. Wait a moment, white oh, communication. What moment? What is this? Oh, it is not. It doesn't make sense. Oh, wait a moment, I need to check it. Why it can communication quiz and uh, market can communication with the RD. RD for this it's a address it's the it's a address shall it be uh, wait who said is a gateway for it wait a moment I didn't uh, specify Who said it? Now it should be that this. it should be right. Okay, now we can check it. They can communication with the PC one can communication with the PC two, and we can recheck it just because the PC one is address not right. We can recheck it.
for the PCS rule, I have already let it re, re authentication. You can find it. It's FTG has changed it. And uh, I can check it on the PC one. The result is the PC one can not communication with the PC two. But if we change the authentication account, PC one can communication with the PC two. That is, we call it the free mobility is just because we use the controller to authorize the, and uh, doesn't matter. And uh, we can change it. We can change it. For example, so we can log in the account on the PC one, PC two. Um, we can log in the RDS account on the PC two, but we log in the Sales account on the PC one, but the result will be the same. It means you, uh, you, uh, uh, you, uh, you, you, um, what, uh, what I mean, uh, it means you access, uh, you access, uh, uh, right is followed by the account, but not by the device or the which port that you connected to the, uh, network. And then let's check the wireless. We can check it on the PC3. The wheel PC3 have a wireless adapter. We can check it. Wait a moment. Oh, I didn't connect any SSID. Wait a moment. Now let's check. Click it to the market. Now it have already connected to the market. And uh, let's check it if I have already opened an address from the DHCP survey. You'll find that it have already, wait a moment, it, it uh, didn't open IP address. Wait a moment, why? Okay, now you find that it have already, now it's asking it already open an address from the AC. Now you can find that it have already opened the drives from the from the WSP service, and now we have already the authentication page, and we can now you can find that we connected to the SSD market. If we try to log in the sales this account, what will happen? You will find that the result is failed. Maybe I need to translate it to. No, I need to translate it to English. Wait a moment. Just because I designate the English, the page is Chinese. Just because this environment is used for the Chinese students. So I need to, uh, wait a moment. We are using English. Hmm. Okay. It is this place. So... Oh, wait a moment. I think I need to I change. I need to change the configurations just because in this place. I need to change the push page to English version. Wait a moment. I need to change the configuration. For the market, uh, I need to change the version to English version default. Username and the password, okay, it shall be this. And uh, for the, it will be same, default uh, username and uh, password name. Okay, now we can try to log in again. Your friends and now the page have already been inhibitions and uh, now I, I connected uh, the SSID is market and what is the result if I try to log in 
the count of seals, you can find that uh, it will not be success. But if we change the account to market, uh, I can log in. And uh, what is the result? If I try to ping the PC1, what is the result? Or oh, the PC1 try to ping the PC3, what is the result? You can find that it should be the... You can find that the PC3 cannot communication with the PC1 just because we only allow, we only allow the we only allow the mark. We only allow the market. The market where the users can communication with the RD. All right. So they don't have the root. It is not a problem of the right. It is a problem of the routers. We don't have the routers to each other, so they can communication with each others. And uh, that is the result of verifications. And uh, maybe you can try to now. We can try to. Connect it to seals and log out. You can find what is the result. Okay, we can try to connect it to the seals. You can log in and uh, Maybe sales can communicate with the market, but they can communicate with each other. And it is uh, depend on the depend on the policy control. You can find that for the market wireless cannot communication with the uh, sales world. Okay, that is the control. Okay, that is all the demonstrator. I don't know if you have any questions about this part. If you have, you can type it or just uh, open your microphone. And uh, so it is good questions. Uh, if you if the configuration conflicts, uh, and uh, actually it's uh, actually it's actually the wait a moment, you can find that if you try to configure something, for example, this config is have the relationship with the configuration that uh, pushed by the controller. You can find that you have this. This command may cause configuration in network mode. If you, it means the controller will push config uh, to the device, but you can change the device the configuration by yourself. And uh, if you want to repush the configurations, and I think you can do it. For example, on the on the set design or the maintenance design, you can find that uh, we can I select this device and. Uh, more, and you can find that you can restore deployment configurations. It means I will repush the configurations that you configured on the controller. So you can't avoid it. It will happen if you configure it on the controller and by manually by yourself. So you can just restore the configurations to the controller config. So, do you have any other questions?
And uh, actually, it's, you can find that uh, one moment. And uh, for example, so I will show you, you can still use the command to maintain the device. So for example, so for example, so you can configure the device. Actually, you can configure the device. You can find that we have this, uh, I think I need to open it on the, on by the PC2, you can find that. We can find that in this page, you can maintain this device. For example, so you can click the command line and then it will open, uh, base, on your basis. But it should be different. I mean, that one can be good. But actually, so you can still perform the on any base. You can find that the device provides a way that you can to open the device by the command. You can still use this to open this. But you just notice what config will uh, will just uh, just will just will maybe avoid just may, will be uh, take effect to the config that uh, controller pushed. So. You should be just be careful. Mm. I mean, not every config you can change it easily. And actually, for the device, you can still log in it by command. It doesn't matter. But uh, you are right. It should be a little different. For example, if you change some configurations and uh, maybe you need to restore it on the controller. On eBase, it still can, can perform, you can find that all the device, you can use this command to maintain it. And uh, for the controller, actually it, it itself uh, provides some functions to the OM. And actually so it still have another, another plugin, it, 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 we call it a uh, comes inside in, Wait a moment, it should be comes inside. And it is still have another plugin. And uh, maybe, and you can find that, wait a moment, I need to check the, and you can find that we have uh, another plugin or another, another thing that like controllers, it is comes inside. And you can use this to do the centralized OM. But uh, you can still use, the command line to maintain it by yourself, but just be careful. You need, you need to be aware of which config you you can't change it easily. So from and uh, actually, so I think you can, you can think it is like the AC, AC, DCN, and plus the E side. You you can find that for the AC campus, it that it doesn't support to deploy the network. Okay, AC campus is just uh, the authentication service. But I think you have already used the AC, DCN, and you can find that AC, DCN can deploy the network all right automatically so you can just find that and you can find that we use the wix and the wix is used there yes yes uh, that is uh, i just because i used i have i have the experience in the acdc and i find that uh, you can find that the external gateway the it is the concept i have already used in the acdc all right and uh, you can find that uh, the configuration that pushed by the controller it is uh, similar all right they use the wax line they use the wrf but the scenario changed from the dc to the camper network which version what a moment and i think uh, you can see the vision and i think uh, you can see the vision And uh, maybe, I don't know if the last month or in the soon later, maybe the RD department, department will release a new version. But uh, 
I will never exam. We will test on the situation. Oh, everyone, if you don't have any questions, and I think we can finish our training today. And uh, please, have we already finished? Yes, we have already finished. And uh, let me check what we will learn on next day. It will be the, it will be the design of the small and middle size uh, cloud and in the campus. And uh, I don't know if actually the, our uh, well, the campus, uh, the NC campus have the cloud version, and it is like the America of the Cisco. It is like the America. I don't know if I type right. Uh, I will can I will see you a spot for the small and business small business scenarios. It is just like the America and it is cloud version. And uh, what is next? And then it will it is the the lesson will enter the SD1 part. It will be SD1. And uh, so in next day, we will learn a new part. It is will be about the SD1. And after about the SD1, I think it is the barrier uh, network. It is about the SR and the SRV6. So now we can think uh, for the campus network, we almost uh, finish it. And uh, maybe we will have the lesson tomorrow and uh, goodbye every day. Uh, and uh, what a moment, America. I don't know if we are tabbed right. Uh, I don't know. You, you can just check it. Uh, it is a Cisco protocol, and uh, you can just think it is the cloud uh, platform. It is a cloud platform, and uh, all you can register your AP and your routers to Americas, and uh, you create an account, and uh, you can bind the device by the ESN to your account, and then you can manage your device on the this platform that is Americas, and uh, we have a corresponding version that is the NCE campus cloud version and uh, and uh, this is you can find that it is used for the small business for example so for the supermarket or just a small office or the small branch that is the scenarios for the Cisco miracles and our NCE uh, campus cloud version 